Well, good morning, Kid Nation. It's old Pastor Tooth here. Boy, I haven't seen y'all in about a week, week and a half or so. I've been on vacation. So Pastor Randy was holding down things for me while I was gone. But anywho, I'm back. Back in business, ready to go, okay? It's amazing to get to meet with y'all first thing in the morning here. Boy, it has been so hot. What'd y'all do? It's like someone forgot to pay a bill or something. How did it get so hot? It's like 147 degrees outside, and my glasses is melting, and I just don't know what to do. It's so hot. You just got to stay inside. Mm. If you do go outside, Kid Nation, tell me you're going to put on some sunscreen and drink some water and, and spend some time in the shade. I know you need to get outside and get your exercise, get your sunlight, get all that stuff, okay? But be careful, please, okay? For past the tooth, just please be careful. Mm. Remember, we got our Zoom meeting tomorrow night at about 6 o'clock, okay? And, you know, Pastor Randy will send out the codes so that y'all can get in there, okay? <clears throat> anyway, it's been real good. We've been playing some games on there the last couple of weeks. It's a lot of fun. Well, we're going to get into our devotion this morning. We're talking about someone this morning named Esther. Now, I know most of y'all know who Esther is because we talked about her before. She's a very special lady from the Old Testament. A very brave young woman, okay? I'm going to go ahead and start reading here. We're going to be in Esther chapter 3. Now, Mordecai, now we'll just get right into this. Mordecai had saved King Xerxes from being murdered. And although the details of what happened were written in a book, the king soon forgot about it. Sometime later, the king promoted a man named Haman to a position above all the other officials. The king ordered that everyone should bow down to Haman as a sign of respect. But Mordecai would not bow down to him or honor him in any way. The other officials asked Mordecai why he refused to bow down to Haman and tried to persuade him to obey the king's command. But Mordecai refused to bow or kneel before Haman. So the officials went and told Haman, to see if he would let Mordecai get away with it. But when Haman found out about Mordecai's disrespect for him, he was furious and started thinking of a way to kill him as well as getting rid of all the Jews. So let me ask you a question. Is it wrong to bow to an important person? Well, let's read here, and I have a few things to say about this. In some cultures... When greeting someone or leaving a gathering of people, it's polite to bow. For some, bowing is as common as shaking a person's hand, while for others, bowing is something you would only do if you entered the throne room of a king. Bowing to a person is a sign of respect. However, when we bow before God in prayer, it's more than a sign of respect. It's an act of humble surrender. It's a way of showing that we accept God's authority. The Bible, the Bible does tell us not to bow down to idols and God. That's in Leviticus. But it does not forbid us to, to bow down to a person. Yet it is just as wrong to bow down in adoration of a person as it is to bow down to an idol. God only deserves, only, excuse me, only God deserves to be worshipped because he is a king of kings. And the Lord of Lords, that's good. Let me read you our bonus scripture for the day, and then we'll talk about this for a minute. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. That's Psalm 95, verse 6. Well, there's a couple things here. Bowing to another person all by itself is not necessarily wrong, okay? But let's talk about a couple, a couple different ways that could be. So, for example... I know sometimes in martial arts, <clears throat> it's very common that when they when when you have a match, if you're going to square off with somebody, you have a competition. It's very common to bow to one another, and it's just a it, it's like it's like a high five or shaking hands. It's just from a different culture, and a lot of your like say Japanese or some of your different cultures, we like to shake hands or give hugs, give high fives, all that stuff, and they would bow. Now, it ain't one person bowing to the other, okay? It's kind of both people just doing this. It's just like an uh, and just saying hello, 
I respect you, nice to meet you, you know, whatever that means. But it's not saying, oh my goodness, I'm going to worship you right now and I'm going to bow down. The Bible says that we absolutely cannot do that. Y'all remember when we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and old King Nebuchadnezzar making that big gold statue. And then boys, when it, when it was time to bow down the statue, they said, we're well, sorry, King, we just can't do that. It's wrong, okay? So for us, we need to, we need to ask ourselves, I'm going to give you a grown-up word here, what is the context? The context. And that means, what's the story going on that, uh, around this bowing? Am I bowing to a person? Okay. <clears throat> Let me ask you this, and this is kind of one of the, the things that I use. If I'm going to bow, is the other person also bowing? Because if they're doing that, if they are, then this is just kind of a mutual sign of respect. Okay. But if I'm bowing to another person, then that's a and, and they're not bowing back. Okay, that's a different deal altogether. So, I guess for my part, I have kind of avoided it. Um, I do take some martial arts, and there's a point at the end of every practice where we kind of stand uh, around a circle, and everyone kind of bows. I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not super comfortable with it. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily wrong, and I don't want to be offensive to anybody, but I just kind of decided, hey, everyone else bows, I just kind of stand up straight. I ain't making a big deal out of it. And no one's ever questioned me about it. So I just kind of leave it alone. But I, I would prefer to not bow. Now, with another, if I went to another culture, if I went to Japan, or I went to one a country where that's, that's what they do, okay, then I'd probably be okay with that. Because it's just like, you know, some people come here and, and be like, why are you shaking hands? That's just weird. You're holding hands with another person. Well, we're not really holding hands. We're just, it's a sign of respect. And, and, and just looking a man in the eye and shaking his hand, okay? And that's how we do that here. But in other countries, they do it different. And that's just totally good. That's totally okay. It's not sin in that, in that, in that case. So we just want to be careful about that, all right? But when we bow in obedience and reverence and surrender, that's only to Jesus. Only to Jesus, okay? We understand that? Well, that's good. Well, Kid Nation, let me pray for you this morning. We're going to get on with our Tuesday. I hope you all stay inside where it's nice and cool. Got the air conditioning going. It's good stuff. All right. Well, Jesus, we love you. We're so grateful for you. Even in this super hot weather, Lord, we're just really grateful for everything you've done for us, the way you protect us and watch over us. I just pray you watch over our Kid Nation students so they're safe when they go outside and get no sunburn or nothing like that. I just pray you watch over us, Lord, and you'd help us to remember that you are the only one that is worthy for us to bow and worship and surrender. We're just really grateful for that, Lord. We love you so much, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, Kid Nation, I love you. I miss you guys quite a bit. Good to be back from vacation, and I hope to see you all real soon. Bye-bye.